Let's move on now to the Old Mutual Peter Moyo saga. Old Mutual board member Peter De Beer joining us from Cape Town this evening to set the record straight on Peter Moyo. Yesterday, Old Mutual fired Moyo again, this despite a pending application to appeal a court ruling that gave him his CEO job back. A very good evening to you, Peter, and thanks for your time this evening. Um, let's start with the decision yesterday to fire Peter Moyo again, if we have to put it that simply. Now, as Old Mutual, you say that you've sought legal advice, and upon reflection, you believe that. Mr. Moyo cannot come back to work. You say you've appealed, so in essence that suspends the judgment. But he argues that the appeal hasn't even been granted. So uh, he wants to know why you're not abiding by the judgment. Now, are you not afraid you might be found in contempt of court? Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening to you and to all the viewers. Um, clearly the purpose of, uh, of, of doing what we've done is twofold. Um, the one is we are in the process of our uh, leave to appeal application was heard last week. Uh, the judge indicated where he would take uh, up to two weeks to give us a response to that, to grant us leave to appeal. Even if we get leave to appeal, there's still going to be a long process and uncertainty in everybody's minds. It's also very clear that the original uh, judgment by Judge Mashili around why he um, overturned our initial uh, dismissal notice was on the technical grounds of which clause of the employment con contract uh, we utilized and um, some technicalities re uh, related to that. We've looked at his judgment very carefully and we believe that events have now overtaken uh, the situation that pertained at the time of the initial dismissal. We still c intend to continue with that case and hopefully we'll be in a position where that initial dismissal is upheld ultimately on appeal. In any event, we need to bring some certainty to the situation. Mm. And events over the last few weeks have made it extremely clear that there is no prospect of any continuing um, working relationship between Mr. Moyo and the board, that the interests of Old Mutual must come first, and that we need to bring certainty th to the matter. Mm. So we are invoking um, the particular clause in his contract which allows the board uh, to terminate his contract on the basis of if you would like to call it irreconcilable differences or a complete breakdown in mutual trust and confidence. And on that basis, we've issued a second notice of termination, uh, which we believe um, would be valid in the event that the original one is found to be invalid. If the original one is found to be valid, then this one uh, won't matter at all. Well, um, but there's still a long road to, to, to continue. And, and certainly from our side, we would like to bring certainty um, to our shareholders and to the public yes. at large. And in that regard, we also published a, a shareholder's letter setting out the matter to shareholders at large. Yeah, well, uh, Peter, you have been quite adamant that you, you know, your, your main interest here is to protect shareholders' interests. So was there no other way to actually solve this? I mean, going in and out of court certainly can't be very good for your situation. Was there no other way to come to some kind of agreement, any other solution to this? I would agree with you that it's extremely sad that it's come to this and that we are engaged in acrimonious litigation. However, from the board's point of view, we did try initially to deal with the thing in the way that one normally would deal with matters of this kind, that while it can't be amicable, at least it can be uh, dignified on both sides. But once the application and the court case was brought against us by Mr. Moyo, we have no option but to defend that application. And in many respects, the agenda is now... Um, somewhat out of our hands mm -hmm. unless one comes to some significant settlement and while I think both parties have said that they would be willing to look at a settlement I think we are so far apart on what might be a reasonable settlement that the prospects of that happening at this stage look quite remote. What is it about Peter Moyo then, uh, Peter, that, that, that actually has got you most uh, worried in the situation? I mean, the, the, the official reason we're talking about is a conflict of interest. That's what you say. You say it's about, uh, you know, NMT capital and, uh, the, and, and a breakdown in trust because of uh, that situation that he says he, was, he maintains that he was fired because he was a whistleblower uh, on, on how all mutual paid legal fees for Trevor Manuel in the Gupta and EFF case. So where do you stand on that? What, what for you is the biggest issue here? Yeah, Iveka, we, are, we as the board are absolutely adamant that the only issue that led to um, us asking Peter to leave the company was the way in which um, NMT Capital, of which he is a director along with uh, three other individuals, uh, made a decision in July last year to pay a large ordinary dividend 
at a time when they were not allowed to do so because there were arrear preference dividends owing to Old Mutual and also the preference uh, capital that had been advanced to them was due for redemption um, the week before they made that decision. So they were not allowed in terms of that share shareholders agreement to declare that dividend. We were very unhappy with the fact that they did not recognize that there was a real issue and made no effort to deal with our concerns in the manner in which we would have expected of a person who's entrusted with running a multi-billion rand institution. So this has these nothing to do... other aspects that Sorry, Mr. Peter. Moyer brought up, this has these, th these three things that he brought up uh, in his application were a complete and utter surprise to us. None of those issues were ever raised with the board as material issues at any time. Mm. And it is very strange that they only came to light after he had been suspended and terminated. So the issue of uh, Old Mutual paying those legal fees for Trevor Manuel in that case is not a problem for you? Not at all. Um, the, the two particular legal cases for Mr. Manuel that we uh, decided to take over the cases and pay them, ironically, our chief legal advisor and Mr. Moyer brought that matter to the Nominations and Governance Committee of the board to say that they would like to take up those cases because Mr. Manuel was being uh, exposed as his position as chairman to um, a serious set of allegations. Uh, the one lot of allegations was around misusing one of our asset management subsidiaries to interfere in the SOE and it was absolutely paramount from our point of view that we took over those cases and took over management of them so they'd be handled properly. Those two cases were to our minds normal business expenses and hence when we looked at the question of did they need to be separately disclosed they were neither material enough in terms of RAND value nor were they extraordinary in any way that they needed to be separately disclosed and we tested that with our auditors. Mm. Can I so ask you? that question was never a major problem at all. The, uh, yeah, Karen? Can I ask you Peter, what was the relationship between uh, Chairman Trevor Manuel and Peter Moyo before all of this hit the fan? Well, two years ago, you know, both Trevor Manuel, myself and a couple of other board members were the committee that um, recommended Mr. Moyer to be appointed as the chief executive. So clearly two years ago we were very happy with his credentials, with him as a person. And in fact my history with Peter goes back a very long way. The two of us were joint deputy MDs of Old Mutual back in the year 2000. So for at that point of course they were, the relationship was extremely healthy and we all committed to, to him succeeding. And no CEO's relationship with the board is perfect, but we had an extremely open and cordial and normal functioning relationship right up until this matter uh, was brought to a head. Um, clearly, the chairman is in the position of being the, the, the most important link between the CEO and the, and the board outside of formal board meetings. But certainly there was no indication to any of us that the relationship was anything other than normal. Mm. Uh, Peter, seeing as this is, uh, you know, the, the, the jury's kind of out on this, you say you see you have no problem with what happened with uh, Trevor Manuel and the paying of those legal fees. Some experts out there believe that, uh, suggest also maybe perhaps Trevor Manuel should step down over a possible conflict of interest too. What do you have to say to that? At the end of the day, all of us as board members are elected by shareholders and we serve at the pleasure of our shareholders so it's a question of you know what do the shareholders want at this stage clearly shareholders are extremely unhappy with the whole situation um, there's been a significant loss of, of value in terms of our share price and so all of us are deeply unhappy about that and that includes shareholders um, we have engaged with most of the um, the major shareholders and at this stage i can i can say that none of the shareholders have raised um, changing the chairman as a as a solution to this issue. Um, certainly it would not be a, a question that uh, you know, would be handled outside of a, of a shareholder meeting. But have they said they certainly want Peter Moyo gone? The shareholders have elected the board to manage the company. The CEO reports to the board. Um, so insofar as the shareholders have expressed opinions, uh, they would like this matter dealt with as quickly as possible. I think most of them understand the uh, initial grounds for us um, asking Mr. Moyer to leave. And from that point of view, I don't think anybody sees it as tenable 
uh, that he could re be reinstated in his position in the way he was without severe disruption. Okay, you, you so say they understand I think it, it's but fair do they to say that the majority it? of our shareholders. They support it to the extent that we are in the process we are in, and while they're not happy with the way it has uh, dragged out and become an acrimonious fight, um, they do support the board in us seeing this thing through to a logical conclusion. But do they support that Peter Moyo should not come back to that position? We have not canvassed that specific question with shareholders, uh, but I've received no information from any shareholder who thinks that um, he should be uh, reinstated into his position. But if uh, most of the discussions around how do you make this issue go away as comfortably mm. as possible. Well, Peter, if you say that your shareholders' interest is paramount, don't you think it's worth canvassing that opinion? As I say, the, uh, the shareholders that we have engaged with, none of them have um, expressed a desire or a, um, an indication that they think the right solution is for the board to just reinstate Mr. Moyer. Uh, Certainly not. Okay, Peter, but I, I just want a, a yes or a no answer. Have you or will you, seeing as you say that their interests are paramount, ask them what, who they feel should stay and who should go in the situation? There are engagements with shareholders around an, numerous matters. The shareholders at the end of the day appoint the board in order that the board should take these kind of decisions. Um, so, yes, we have their support in what we are doing, um, but we do not go to, with every decision to shareholders specifically and say, you know, should we do this or that. What we have done is explained what we have done to shareholders, and broadly the shareholders understand the process that we're in, and they are supportive of us seeing the process through in the way in which we are mm. doing. So, Peter, I am banging on about that point because you said none of them have expressed uh, or that, that they feel that uh, Trevor Manuel needs to go. So that's why I want to know. You seem to think in that case shareholders can have a say, but when it comes to Peter Moyo, not so much. They leave it up to you. Specifically, I think the key job of shareholders in, uh, is to appoint boards. And so very definitely, shareholders have to decide who um, is elected to a board. Mm, and have uh, you asked them how they feel the about board, Trevor Manuel? They then, will and engage with the board on decisions. The, there are one or two smaller shareholders who have said publicly that they think it's difficult um, to envisage um, the whole board continuing the way it is. Those are some smaller shareholders. The major shareholders have not expressed that at all. All right, and then just moving on very quickly, Peter. You know, Peter Moyo's legal team is saying in court, uh, actually telling you to grow up and stop adding lawyers to your legal team, saying it's not going to help you. Uh, what do you have to say to that? Uh, you know, if he, to Peter Moyo saying that you need to grow up. Well, I think it's a bit ironic, seeing as the the whole legal application was brought in the first instance uh, by Mr. Moyer and his team. Mr. Moyer and his team were the ones who um, were extremely vocal in the media um, right from the word go when we were not. And then finally, um, we are in a situation now where we are responding to some really wild accusations from the legal side of, of Mr. Moyer. Um, things as wild as all the directors should be declared delinquent, all the directors are in contempt of court, when all we have done is appeal the decision by a judge, which is a normal legal process. So I think the hyperbole and the, um, the rhetoric uh, has come very much from Mr. Moyer's side. Uh, from our side, we are trying to deal with this thing uh, with as much decorum as possible, but we cannot let half-truths and untruths um, and defamatory allegations stand um, uncorrected and unchallenged. And how that's a position that we have to be in. And how much damage do you reckon this has done to Old Mutual? I think we're very fortunate that we have a very strong organization operationally. Um, we have a very strong executive committee, an executive team in place. Um, at this stage, Operationally, things are moving along as well as one would expect under a very experienced uh, interim acting uh, CEO. However, there's absolutely no doubt that you know, for an organization that um, relies on the trust of the public to look after its vast savings, and we've been doing that for 170 years, uh, clearly um, this is not good for our brand. 
And certainly, um, the longer this drags on, uh, the less good it is for all of our stakeholders. So absolutely, there's damage has been done. I think it remains to be seen whether that damage is temporary or to what extent it is permanent. Mm. And Peter, are you quite clear that none of this is to protect Trevor Manuel in this situation? I'm absolutely clear that all of the reason that led to the board deciding that uh, Mr. Moyer should uh, leave the organization was related to the handling of the NMT matter and all of these other matters came to the fore after that event and had nothing to do with the decision of the board. Well, thanks very much uh, for your time there and uh, um, for giving us your take on what this is. That's uh, Old Mutual board member Peter DeBeer joining us from Cape Town.